praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Before I get into my preaching or my message or anything on this morning, my heart is overwhelmed because God has allowed us to be in his presence. There's something about the presence of God. It can renew your strength. It can give you hope when it seems like there is none. I thank and I praise God this morning just for allowing me to be here. I give honor to God who's ahead of my life, to my past and his absence. Won't be absent too much longer. To the first lady, to the first lady, <clears throat> to each and every one here, to my wife. Truly just an honor and a privilege to be in God's presence. You know, I began, you know, before I just really get to ministry on this morning, I just feel led to tell you that God told me to tell his people <clears throat> maybe three weeks ago. He said that this word that I'm giving Bethel is a word from heaven. And if you want to go to heaven, you must obey this word. I didn't say Elder Furman. I said the Lord told me to tell you that this word is from heaven. And if you want to go to heaven, you must obey the word. The word of God. That's, that's all we have to stand on in these last and evil days. And uh, you can turn your Bible if you have it to the book of to the book of Acts. To the book of Acts. How many know we need some action? <laughs> Hallelujah. If you know anything about the book of Acts, the book of Acts is the, is the book that Luke wrote. The physician, the physician Luke, he began to write, he closed out the gospel of Luke, and then he opened it right back up in the book of Acts. Because tell somebody you can't leave people hanging. You have to let them know what it takes. Amen, amen, let me get there. You can stand for the reading of God's word, please. I'm going to be dealing with Saul, who became Paul. <laughs> Hallelujah. In the book of Acts, chapter number 9, it reads, And Saul, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, against the church, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if, any, that if he found any of this way, say the Christian way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. As he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. And he fell to the earth and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecuted thou me? And he said, why, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. And it is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. And he trembling and astonished said, Lord, what would thou have me to do? And the Lord said unto him, Arise, and go into the city, and it shall be told thee what thou must do. Father God, in the precious and mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, send your anointing that makes ministry easy. Lord God, send your anointing that destroys every yoke. Lord God, we plead the blood right now over this service, Lord. Anything that's not like you, any demonic power, any demonic force, it would be beat down right now in the name of Jesus. And Lord God, have thine own way. Deliver set free, Lord God, and you will get all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord, Bishop. Praise the Lord, Bishop. Praise him. Hallelujah. You know, as I prepare, Lord, hallelujah, to, you can be seated. Hallelujah. Now, God, hallelujah, begin to deal with me, dealing with Saul. And anybody know anything about Saul? Saul was a man who thought he was doing the right thing. He thought he knew what he was doing. But he went around giving out threats and making accusations against the people of God. And he 
wanted everybody to know uh, that he was going to go to the priest uh, and get a letter uh, so that anybody that he found uh, coming to church uh, and serving Jesus, uh, he was going to take them uh, back to Jerusalem. Uh, but I began to think about this story. Uh, Paul, uh, if I leave you a thought this morning, uh, tell your neighbor, uh, Lord, uh, prepare me a road. Prepare me a road. And in my subtopic, blind me so that I can see. Blind me, Lord. We are dealing with something here now that one of the greatest miracles to ever take place in the Bible. Saul was a man that didn't believe that he had to serve God. The God that he was serving, he thought he was doing the right thing. But when he found out on a road called Damascus that it was something bigger than him, something he had me said that he was on his beast uh, and it came a light uh, and it appeared unto him uh, that knocked him off his beast. Uh, sometimes uh, we got to get knocked down. Uh, we got to get knocked off of our beast. Uh, we got to let the Lord come uh, and show us uh, what it is he will have us to do. Uh, and I began to think about something. Uh, I said I got some good news this morning uh, and I got some bad news this morning. Uh, the bad news is uh, if Saul didn't uh, acknowledge uh, who God was, uh, he would have went to hell uh, in his state. Uh, but the good news is uh, he he said, who art thou? He said, I am the Lord. He, he realized that he had to confess who was talking to him. I want you to understand something this morning. It was the will of God that we was all one time alienated from the commonwealth of Israel. I was a Saul. You was a Saul. Before God brought you to the church, you was considered a Saul. You was talking about the church. You was doing things against the church. You was backbiting against the church. But God had to let you come in contact with a man called Jesus. He had to let you know that the one that you was trying to talk about and ridicule is the one that you now need. You need Jesus. You need Jesus in your life. We got to understand who we are dealing with. Saul, he was a man that didn't believe water was wet. He kept on talking about the people. He even watched the stoning of Stephen. I went on and studied this thing. And when it says it is hard for you to kick up against the bricks, he was talking about God let you see the stoning of Stephen. I even let you hear his last prayer. And your heart still didn't turn. I let you come across Gamaliel, the one that taught you the law. And you still didn't believe me. He said, so I had to prepare you a road. He had to prepare Saul a road. He had to get him on a road called Damascus. I don't know what your road is, but he told me to tell you this morning. He's preparing you a road that you're going to come in contact with the living God. You're going to come in contact with Jesus. It said in his word that I did knock him to his beast. And he got up and after he began talking to him, it said that he opened up his eyes and saw no man. Think about it. My eyes are open, but I see nobody. God, let him open up his eyes just to let him realize, now you're blind. You was already blind at first. I'm going to make you blind for real now. All right. Come here, EJ, real quick. Close your eyes. Saul, his eyes was open, but they were actually shut. And now, the things that he looked upon, this world that he thought he had control over, this world that he thought was going to help him, this world, now he has to have somebody, give me your hand, he has to have somebody now take him around the town to let him get to where God would have him to go. Don't make Jesus plan you. Plan me, Lord, so I can see. He took him a 
Jesus. I can't even help you. I can give you what he told me to tell you. But it's up to you. Elizabeth said it's a personal thing. This is personal. We, we have received grace. A favor rendered by one who need not to do so. The free and unmerited favor of God. The fine favor bestowed on people as in grant, grant them redemption from sin. He redeemed us from sin. We can't play with sin. No form of it. He wants you to go from Saul to Paul. I begin to think about Ananias. God had already ordained a man of God that Paul, that Saul was going to run into. And because of the things that Saul had done, and because of the places Saul had been, and because of where they thought, and because they thought who, who they thought he was, uh, Ananias was afraid. But while God was dealing with Saul, he also went and dealt with Ananias. Uh, he went and dealt with the church. Uh, he went and dealt with the church. Uh, so the church would receive those uh, that come in uh, that look like Saul, uh, but he wants to make them brother. He wants to make him brother Paul, sister, whatever your name is, brother, whatever your name is. He wants to put brother, sister in front of your name. He wanted to make Saul part of the family. We are family. The only family you truly have. Because your other family is of the world. Don't get it twisted. God's not playing with you. He don't care who your brother is, your sister is, your cousin is. You better love me more than you love them. If not, take it up with Jesus. The bottom line is, an act of, an act of kindness beyond what is due. Grace is a gift of God, which is eternal life. It's eternal. I begin to think about this. We ain't gonna live here forever. But one thing I know, we're going to have eternal life somewhere. And when, since I know I'm going to have eternal life somewhere, I, I might as well do it the way Jesus uh, would have me to do it. I, I want Jesus uh, to prepare me a road. I, I want him uh, to take me down whatever street uh, I need to go down. Uh, if it calls me uh, to receive salvation, uh, I want it. Uh, I want that road. Uh, if he calls me uh, to go blind uh, where I can't see, uh, I want it. Uh, because if it'll keep me saved, I want to be saved. Too many times we get sidetracked by this and that and what's in front of us. And sometimes we even look back. But he said, how many know you're not fit for the kingdom of God? If you stick your hand to the plow and look back, we got to keep going. We got to keep going. Ain't no time to stop now. It's time to do some jumping jacks, some sprints, or whatever it takes to stay in shape, to stay on this road called Damascus. In order for the complete change to take place, Paul, I mean Saul, had to become a new creature. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17, say therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old or passed away, and behold, all things are become new. God works to allow me and you an opportunity. God died to allow you and me an opportunity to become a new creature, to put all old things behind us. That means the way I think about things, the way I go about things. I got to let Jesus take the wheel. I got to let the Lord do it. I got to Lord, do it for me. Lord, fix it for me. Lord, have your way in me. Lord, Songs. Every time we come in the, in the, in the sanctuary, huh? but it said, uh, Lord, do it for me huh? in the morning. Huh? Might be too late. Huh? Do it for me right now. Huh? Get saved right now. Huh? Go to the water huh? right now. Huh? Uh, hey, go to the water huh? and be baptized huh? in the sweet name of Jesus huh? right now. Huh? Don't keep walking in and out these doors. 
I'm not going back down that same highway no more. Go ahead. It's got exit closed. You ever been going down the highway and see the sign says exit closed? You don't take that exit, do you? If you do, you're going to run into some danger. I'm telling you tonight, I counsel every assignment of the enemy. I take authority in the name of Jesus. God has a plan that me and you don't understand. I don't understand God's plan. I would have never told him to take me to federal penitentiary to turn me around. All right. He did it, though. Amen. Hallelujah. God's will is to see you in the wheel. So come on and surrender. Don't let this chance pass you by. The song says, Pass me not. Sister McAtee, old general Savior. He's a general Savior. Here, my humble cry. Why on others thou call? Lord, please. I don't want to call you so. 
servants, I call you my friend. Woo! In other words, he's saying, since I've already told you what to do, I consider you my friend because I shared some stuff with you. He's calling you his friend this morning. A servant serves. A friend he'll talk to. A friend he'll help out. A friend he'll come and see about you in the midnight hour. A friend. He said, I called you a friend. I wonder this morning. If you haven't been baptized, this is for those that ain't been baptized yet. You in here this morning. And you ain't been down in the water. It's time. God has been too good to you. He's been better than good. I listen to that song with friend. He calls me friend. Whenever nobody else is, he's still my friend. If you're here this morning and you want God to put you on that road toward Damascus, he wants the light to shine about you this morning. He wants you to come to the altar place offer. He wants you to come to the altar to be baptized in the sweet and matchless name of Jesus. And if you have been baptized, but you say, Lord, Lord, I just keep on doing what I do. Lord, I, I get up and I go two months, three months, six months, but Lord, I need your power. He said it's for you. He said, this promise is unto you, your children, and your children's children. He talked about generation after generation after generation. But it starts with us. If you hear this morning, just stand up where you at. You don't even have to come to the altar. Stand up. If you want prayer, I'm not going to do it individually. Stand right where you at. Stand right where you at. We're going to unify against this devil. Let's shout time out, shit. Take somebody by the hand. I don't care who it is. He wants to change you from Saul to Paul. He wants to change you from sister so and so. I mean, from so and so to sister so and so. Brother so and so. And I'm going to lift this prayer up. And I believe that this seed is going to fall on good ground. And I'm looking for 30, 60, 100 fold in Jesus' name. Father God, I have done what you have told me to do. I have delivered this word from heaven. And Lord God, I ask that you would give the increase. Lord God, whoever's struggling this morning, I come up against every addiction, every stronghold in your mind, every battle, every sickness. You said that I can decree a thing and it shall be established. I decree and declare that by the word of God, they shall be delivered. They shall be free. They shall be healed. They shall do your will. Lord God, have their own way. Do it, Lord. Do it, Lord. Do it for them. And do it for me. Remember the mission. Remember the first lady. And remember the church of the whole. In Jesus' name, reach over and tell somebody.
Ain't no wrong ways. Ain't no turning back. But it's going straight down that road. And he said it. Paul seemed like he was a hard man. But Jesus can touch anybody's heart. He can break up that heart of stone and put in a heart of flesh, which he called the gift of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Amen. And he said, blind me so I can see. Yeah, Lord. He was blinded spiritually, but then became blind naturally. But then his eyes was open so he could see spiritually. <laughs> he was blind spiritually first. Then his eyes became open spiritually, but then he got blinded naturally. And then he laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul. They call Paul no more. They call him Brother Saul. My, look what God can do. He can change anybody. He can change anybody. No situation is too hard for God. No problem is too hard for God. But you got to go down the right road. He said there's a way to seem right unto a man. There is a way to seem right. But he said there's only one road and one way, and that's Jesus. Amen. And he laid the invitation out for you that he can change you. He can make a difference. We all had to come down that road. I was going down the wrong road. But he turned me around. What no you turn? But he turned me all the way around and took me right back down to the right road. But if you want to be changed, go down the right road. You want to change in a different way? Go down the right road. Amen. And I'm telling you, you go down that road, your life won't be the same never right. again. I went down that road June 10, 1987. And it's going on be 33 years in June. And I thank God he took me down that right road and I met Jesus. And he turned my life around. And I'm telling you what, I'm not going back the right road. Back road. I'm going to continue down the road of holiness, the highway of holiness. It's open for you. Is that? That road is open. If you take a step, he'll take a step. You make a move, Jesus will make a move. But you can't go down that road unless you move. You can't stand still. You got to move. Get your legs to move. Get moving. And I'm telling you, your life will never be the same. And I thank God that I went down the right road. No turning back. No turning back. I went down the right road and no turning back. You know, let's get God a handprint for that word that was delivered into us today. Hallelujah. Now you're in the hands of the Dickens and Usher, please. Come and take up this love offering, please, for the man of God. Be <coughs> free.
going to do a special prayer request. Jesus. 